100 years after people. The Seven Mile Bridge once connected Miami and the Florida Keys. But a hundred years of storms and hurricanes have weakened some of the 440 concrete sections. Sending parts falling into the ocean until the span looks like a row of broken teeth. In Phoenix, the 90 square block business district, once the financial center of Arizona, is a chaos of mud and debris. Think about the dust that comes through with our sandstorms and then the rain that comes through to form mud that would build year after year. Then this place would certainly look a lot different than it does today. Mud-filled floors crash and tumble and the piled up debris collapses the towers from within. The tower's shattered glass will be taken up by the next great sandstorm and sliced through other structures until Phoenix is desolate. While some of man's structures fall from above, others are eaten from below. In the time of humans, more than 1,000 miles of man-made earthen barriers controlled flooding in the Everglades. But thousands of sailfin catfish, descendants of pets brought from South America in the 1970s, have invaded the dikes and levees, digging three-foot deep burrows to lay their eggs. So you have a, a dike, and you have the catfish down here. This is this year. That's the next year. That's the next year. And eventually, obviously, the dike fail. As the barriers break, dry areas become swampland. Even an outpost as seemingly permanent as the Kennedy Space Center teeters on the edge of a marshy swamp. Even in the time of humans, alligators were always at its gates and launch pads from the dawn of space exploration were already abandoned and rusting. Now, the remaining structures and rockets are the victims of repeated South Florida hurricanes, and the only creatures waiting to launch from here are hungry vultures. 196 miles up the coast, Miami, has run out of beach. It's a reversal of fortune for a place that began life around 1914 when developers began filling in over two and a half thousand acres of mangrove swamp around a narrow coastal sandbar to create a high-class beach resort. But the creation of Miami Beach contained the seeds of its destruction. As coastal structures are constructed, it interrupts the natural flow of sand along the coastline of South Florida and it produces a deficit of sand and that requires extensive replenishment. By the late 20th century, so much of the coast had been eaten away that some hotels lost 80% of their beachfront. In a battle against time and the Atlantic, in the early 1970s, engineers brought in millions of tons of new sand. One century after people, the invading ocean is unopposed as it swallows the foundations of once luxurious hotels. You expect after a hundred years or longer, those buildings would start to collapse. The former hotels fall into each other before finally toppling into the waiting grasp of the Atlantic. Even greater changes are in store. What does the future hold for man's most gravity-defying and supposedly eternal structures? Which invaders prevail? And what will be man's ultimate legacy? One hundred and fifty years after people, Burmese pythons dominate the Everglades and they've invaded fresh territories. 
Capable of living in more varied climates than alligators, and even able to climb trees, the pythons now dominate the lower 40% of what was once the United States. Two hundred years after people, cities like Phoenix barely exist. Elsewhere in Arizona, some desert structures still stand, but not for long. The Skywalk, unveiled in 2007, is a four-inch thick, 70-foot-long glass plate set 4,000 feet above the Grand Canyon, anchored with 500 tons of steel beams, two and a half inches thick. It used to be checked every day for cracks and flaws, 